Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 7G DCT transmission on our Mercedes A Class. So, for those of you that don't know, DCT, DCT stands for dual clutch transmission, which essentially means it's an automatic gearbox um, that has two clutches um, one that operates the odd numbered gears and one that operates the even numbered gears. And the reason they do this is to make it really, really fast. Um, and smooth uh, because essentially what you can do then is it will just have every gear that you need ready um, so it's quite a quite a good um, little little gearbox especially this Mercedes one um, it's a newly designed one specifically for the A-Class and it is probably one of the smallest transmissions that Mercedes have ever made so it's quite an interesting box um, but I thought in today's video we'll give you a few bits and pieces tell you what it's like to live with tell you what it's like to drive um, and also talk about how to look after this gearbox as well um, because as with every, trans every um, automatic transmission car I think We've only got one at the moment, the, the Polo, which isn't an automatic. So um, you need to look after these gearboxes um, because if looked after properly, they can last a lot longer, longer than manual transmissions um, in terms of clutches and everything. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So like I said, it's a, it's a dual clutch transmission um, and it's essentially very similar to the DSG gearbox in the VAG products. So, like I said, it's got... Um, two shafts that run within it um one has gears one three five and seven um and the other shaft has gears two four and six and essentially each one has its own clutch so no matter what gear you're in um the car will always be able to change down really really quickly um these gearboxes can be a bit slow to change down in terms of kick down if um depending on what gear it needs to kick down into so say you're say you're in gear six um and you need the car to kick down into second um that's going to take quite a long time because it's only technically running in an, a single clutch um, because it's on the same shaft whereas if you were kicking down into third um it would then swap onto the other clutch and be able to do it really quickly but to be fair that's quite rare that these gearbox ever have any sort of hesitation issues um, another thing, coming from a torque converter in my Volvo, um, I've noticed that these cars, um, you don't get sort of the the way that the Volvos sit and stand still, sort of, when you're in reverse down a hill. These will roll, roll forward, um, purely because those clutches have got to engage into the gear. Uh, so that's another thing to bear in mind. But in terms of driving manners, this gearbox is a very, very nice little gearbox. Um, once it's warmed up, um, you don't even notice the gear changes happening. Uh, when it's cold, uh, it's not clunky, but you do notice the gear changes happening. I suppose it's the same as any any automatic gearbox. I mean, the Volvo does it, the X3 does it, the Golf does it. So um, it, that's quite common in gearboxes in general. But actually, um, in terms of as a driver's gearbox, it's a fantastic little box. Um, they're fairly easy to look after as well. Obviously, with it being dual clutches, um, there's potentially two clutches that you'll need to replace at some point. However, if you adopt a couple of the tips I'll talk about later, um, then you should be absolutely fine in terms of that. To maintain, uh, they need a a fluid change every sort of 5,000 miles or 62,500 miles. That's um, in a Mercedes book. And this is fairly simple to do. Um, if you're not mechanically inclined, then don't worry. Just get it done by a specialist. Um, I wouldn't bother getting it done by Mercedes, purely because they'll probably charge you much more than a specialist will. Um, so bear that in mind it is doable yourself um, but i wouldn't recommend it if like i said you're, you're not mechanically minded if you've got quite a bit of experience of working on cars then you'll probably be okay um so yeah like i said it's a joy to bash through the gears on um it's mostly to the diesel in this car and it's it's yeah it delivers the power really nicely um doesn't give you any issues whatsoever uh this car's 52 53 000 miles now um we put a thousand miles on it already and two weeks so um yeah we've had plenty of experience and i can say um like i said it's, it's a nice it's a nice little car just just on inclines it's a bit different to get used to um like i said when we're reversing um up away from these gates you really have to put the power down otherwise it will roll forward which could be quite disconcerting um but then mercedes also have the whole function as well which helps with that so um yeah in terms of looking after this gearbox in terms of your driving habits and um, we've been through the maintenance um 
you've, you've just got to essentially use it as a manual gearbox um, in that respect. So you wouldn't sit on a hill um, with the clutch engaged, slipping the clutch to keep the car in position. You'd, you'd apply the brake. And it's the same for these cars as well. Um, so if you were to sit on the hill uh, in this car, um, with it in drive and sometimes the car may start to sort of roll so you accelerate essentially what you're doing is you're putting all the strain of sitting on that hill through the transmission creating heat and wear on the clutches now this is what you actually have brakes for so um use use the things that are designed to do that rather than the clutch um itself uh, so that's one thing um second can be it's a very very rare situation i don't really know why anyone would do it but um essentially because the gearbox is trying to predict what gear you're going to need next um it essentially gets it ready to change into so if you're braking it it gets the below gears ready so that you can um change down really really quickly however if you for some reason um change up a gear as you decelerate the it basically confuses the computers and um slams into the gear it's not very good for the clutches um, and it's not very good for the rest of the transmission so bear that in mind as well um, but to be honest guys that's it um, in terms of looking after these cars like I said you've got to do the, the gearbox fluid change um, fairly regularly every five years or so or 62 and a half thousand miles so as long as you get that done you'll be absolutely fine so um, yeah thanks for watching guys uh, I'll see you in the next video cheers <laughs>